Faggot TD. Hey, what's good? What's good indeed. <laughs> <laughs> the way he said it, faggot teeny. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I would picture Dr. Wolf saying it. But I have a master's degree in faggotry. Faggot TV. Hey, what's this? <laughs> That's good okay. You know what? That's that's staying in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can see it coming. Oh my god, what? that's beautiful. God damn it. <laughs> 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 this well, is beautiful. This is indeed beautiful. So we're at that magical time in the podcast where I show the guest their picture. So I'm going to throw it in the room. This is from Hungry Summer's Boyfriend, which I will definitely put in the description at, at reasonably close to the top, just above the guests. I'm not sure how my mic quality is. I just plugged in my fucking Logitech headset. It's it's yeah, certainly it's better than Fob Girls. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> At first, I can tell you sound fine. Yes. Thank you. Indeed. Fucking learn how to pronounce my name, figot. All right. So tell me, Spirit, do you like this? Oh, wow. Excellent. Another That was... Of... That is awesome. I it's really pretty. Yeah. That's yeah. Amazing. You are a magical girl. And since, it's not a sh- and since it's not a shown-off picture, I was like, pretty sure she can't get offended because there's no boobs. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> what, Kichi? <laughs> I feel like you're talking about me. No, no. Originally, when you were like, oh, yeah, you might want to cancel that thing. And I was like, well, I'm not going to throw away show enough's, like, spot here. So then I was, like, asking, I was like, Spirit Productions, would you like a show enough picture? And she's like, <laughs> sure. <laughs> and then he didn't deliver. So show enough, uh, if you ever hear this, me and Kichi are still willing to buy that artwork off of you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're not angry. We're just, we, we want it. <laughs> we really do. Yes. We were willing to pay. And we, we don't defraud artists. I'll give a whole dollar. That's the only money I have in my PayPal right now. So I didn't go around the room and do the introduction yet. So this is FNGR welcoming you the following co-hosts, Kichi FIM, who doesn't want to be uh, here. Hi. <laughs> the one, the you- only, the faggot, the faggotini. <laughs> <laughs> it is me. And the person who's totally not a faggot, Tricky Fox. <laughs> Totally not a faggot. Yes, indeed. And this week's Queen of Limbo, who's probably really regretting coming on the show by now. (laughs) Spirit Productions. Uh, hey, she got nice artwork out of it, so she has no reason to complain. It it is really nice, and it's an amazing freaking crown. <laughs> it's beautiful. <clears throat> it is indeed beautiful. So let's see here. Name your top three influences in the fandom, Miss Productions, or would you prefer Spirit? Spirit is easier because it's both easier to say, and I'll probably respond to it better. Spirit so. it is. Queen spirit, okay. there we go. So let's see, <laughs> top three influences in the fandom. For lack of a better word, like role models almost, that I would follow, sort of. What, kind is, of what is your Mount Rushmore of bronies? <laughs> <laughs> mm. I could say the stereotypical, like, whatever the top five is right now. I really like, I like Silvercoil style videos, at least. Like, that's something I wish I had the level of skill to reach, if that makes sense. No, I understand. Uh, He puts a buttload of editing in there. I'm assuming you don't mean the plushy wiggling. No, no, no. I'm talking (laughs) about that. That is exactly what she means. (laughs) (laughs) I wish I could wiggle a plushy that vigorously. You know, I could. (laughs) I, I don't mean this as a dig, and I hope she doesn't hear this and screw at me. I could totally see Hungry so much as saying that for some reason. <laughs> Time to stop. <laughs> no more. Was that your only answer? Which is fine. I'm going to be honest. I can't really think of anyone else off the top of my head. I mean, I would also say Golden Fox's videos were kind of one of the reasons why I got into the community. There we so. go. Yeah, it's always good to have at least one classic in there. Not that we think you're and- old, Goldie. You're beautiful. I think he's old. <laughs> That was <laughs> kitschy if I am. Uh, he's not as foxy as I am. Indeed. <laughs> no one's as foxy as Tricky. Who is your favorite brony artist? Spirit Productions. Spirit. Me. Indeed. <laughs> I was about Other to say, than- you could really put over a uh, dragon fox girl who needs assistance right now, but nope. Screw you. <laughs> this is <laughs> Spirit Fox. Hey, I, li- I like her. Uh, yeah, no, no. Uh, she, she's I cool. like her artwork. I, saw, uh, I commissioned her before. Twice. Oh, okay. In all honesty, just real quick on that, I've like don't have any particular favorite artist. I like Safi's work a lot. I also I don't know how to pronounce the username. Shin that, Shin, however it's pronounced. Uh, that reminds me, is Safi on? No, possibly. Right, no, off on. Okay, um, just just making sure because I was like I looked and I was like I think she's not on. <laughs> it's okay because I as soon as she, I was like I feel like I forgot somebody. She's gonna kill me. <laughs> it's just but no. 
Okay, at least as long as I remember. More, should I, should I construct your casket? Indeed. Put a mini you? bar on that bitch. Well, s- since we're probably going to talk more about that now, who are your best friends in the fandom? Mm, that's a really tough one, because I've kind of gone through these stages, like, leaving other people behind. But I've got, like, these series of friends that I've made throughout my three years or so of being in the fandom. Oh, Jesus, you've so- been a brony longer than me. <laughs> well, I've been around for a long time. I just, I've gone through, like, these... Like I said, stages. So I used to have, I started off as just an artist. Well, actually, kind of, sort of. I won't go into that right now. But I guess if I had to pick right now, basically a lot of people in the Secret Rift right now, which isn't so secret anymore. No, oh, that's, that's perfectly fine. In fact, we're going to go there next. What are your thoughts on the Rift before and after getting in? I guess, like, initially I was probably a lot more excited to get into it. Like, now I'm just kind of used to being in it and being able to converse with everyone. If that makes sense. No, I absolutely understand it. I remember when I first got in there, I was pestering all of my friends going, Oh my god, so-and-so is here. And they're like, shut up. <laughs> We've heard about it for a week now. <laughs> well, shut up, well uh, thanks to the whole uh, collab thing since, uh, of the uh, top tier reviewers, the Rift always seems like this magical place. Everyone who's cool is in there until you realize that's not the case. <laughs> I, I still think it's magical from time to time. We have a chicken. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dark Edge will always make that room feel magical for me. <laughs> uh, best character in this whole thing. 11 out of 10. Indeed. What's been your biggest oops and brony so far? Mm, I guess that really kind of depends on what you mean. Like in my content production? Overall, like if you, you you could have back one day where you made a oops is a brony, whether you deleted a file, trusted the wrong person. It, it's how Think of it as a big giant sandbox. How do you want to play with it? Mm, well, it's, I've got... Two examples here. One is an art relation and one is in relation to, well, actually both are art related. One was the first one, which probably will take a little bit longer to talk about. I used to work on another DeviantArt account and basically that account's gone stale now. I haven't been on it since November of last year, so almost a year now. Mm -hmm. But basically I was kind of like, I felt like I was being a little bit of a kiss up, if that makes sense, in terms of my prices. So, and I eventually got to the point where I wasn't being paid and I just kind of ignored it. So if I could, like, if I had been more assertive about it, I probably would have appreciated that of myself a little bit more. I was just sitting there thinking, damn, I wish I would have known you back then. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> so, Kevin, so, hey. Kevin so had you, that problem. Where she so your church. problem was that you were too nice. I was way too nice for my own good. Kichi's never That's- had that problem. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I am I am very nice to myself, Anthony. I am very nice for my own good. Indeed. Kichi's the type of person who will call you a bitch to your face. No regrets. She might. What's your proudest work, your magnum opus, so to speak, spirit? That should be a, a uh, top board re- review she did with me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the one thing that came out one week ago. <laughs> oh, <to me. laughs> Let's see here. I've got... Once again, I've got two answers for this one. I recently did a traditional painting, basically, for my art field, and I am very proud of it. It's not perfect, but it's, like, my best that I've ever done in that medium. And then a magnum opus in terms of video would probably be probably my Comment Corner episode two when I covered Mimi. Like, I was trying to figure out a way to plug her, basically. I wanted her to get more subscribers, and it's like, oh, I don't really want to pull off, like, the review reviewer kind of thing. So I'm just going to create a commentary and hope people take it the right way. You mean Mim Kage, right? Yes. Okay, just making sure. M- Mimi is a name where I was like, that could be in the anime fandom for all I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, it does derive from the Japanese word Kage. Okay. In any case, yeah, I saw both your painting and your commentary, and I think both are rather good. I, uh, I think it's a very pretty painting, and you did give Mimi some constructive criticism in your commentary. I want her to be the best, so... I, I don't yeah. know why, but Tricky sounds so con- condescending. It's a very pretty painting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Not everyone speaks the king's English. So anyways, I, I, I like Tricky's accent. To hell with every... All these Tumblr people, Kiji, who whiny can't understand him talking. <laughs> <laughs> Who's blown you away so far has lived up to your expectations in the fandom? that you've met. Like, what do you mean? Oh, you, like, you has, thought, I thought this person you. was going to be super cool. I met them and oh my God, they were super cool. Versus, well, I, like, I was just skipping it, over the underwhelming question because I wanted to give it you an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> Basically all of you guys, you guys are all awesome. Oh, uh, that, that's an Anthony C answer. He'd be You haven't met us in person, have you? <laughs> well, she's you don't even wrong. know who I am. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I want to meet you guys at BronyCon, but I'm trying to get there. It's just, it hasn't happened yet. Let me just shamelessly slip you my DA link real quick. Okay. I will I will include Fagatini's DA link in the co-host <laughs> section. <laughs> the queerest of the queer. So anyways, who do you want to collab with currently? Like, if I had the choice, I'd probably ask Lightning Bliss, because I really like her style of videos. Would you make fun like, of her Like, I'm not sure height? she'd have the... Huh? Would you make fun of her height in the video? <laughs> Probably not. Aww. Like, <laughs> uh, but that basically comes with the package. You ca- you are kind of you kind of have to do a joke about that. I'll make the joke, but she gets to knock me over with boobs. Then I was like, got to be in trade. I was thinking that that where Tricky like winds up sizing up to Lightning Bliss, and he's like, "Quick, Kichi, her tail's hovering over me." <laughs> Kichi gives him a hoop up on top of her head. He's like, "Ha ha, I'm now taller." <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's the thing. I can't do the uh, the joke because I uh, my OC is smaller than her. <laughs> like, Kichi, she's taller than me. <laughs> Uh, indeed what's the most trouble that you've ever been in and remember only the fun guests get this one right (laughs) (laughs) oh yeah i totally screwed up that question (laughs) i'm trying to think of what kind of answer i should provide there's so many ways one there's there's so many easy ways of going through this i don't know a misunderstanding with the cops a speeding ticket you accidentally drink some wine when you thought it was grape juice (laughs) kichi does that every day The time you quote unquote accidentally went to that strip club. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, there's none around there. I practically live in the middle of nowhere. (laughs) Accidentally. Accidentally, indeed. Uh, Let's see. I think I do have something, and unfortunately for me, this is relatively recently, but I work, like, a little backstory. I work on a computer repair team at my secondary school, and what happened was is I tried to get Paint Tool side to run on the computer. I got the trial version, but but me being the person who ended up waking up at three in the morning that day, I ended up allowing it for some reason to download a bunch of stuff that I didn't want it to put on my computer. So yeah, the leader of the computer repair team had to have her personal computer re-imaged by the CS of the school. So you had to do, what? what's that thing? Uh, reinstall everything? How did that happen? I don't know. I don't know how it works, but basically I had to have my computer taken and have the highest level of repair aside from absolutely utterly destroyed. Like, basically everything taken off of it and reinstalled. See, this is why you shamelessly pirate your art programs. Had to have it formatted, gotcha. Who's the craziest brony that you've met in the Rift? Mm, In the Rift? Mm, That's a tough one. Not really, but go ahead. (laughs) There's so many of us crazy people to choose from in this rift. Well, fine. Dude, who's your three-way tie for craziest bronies in the rift? Let's see. I would definitely say foul play. Definitely foul play. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Safi might keep... rank up there. Oh, when she hears this, she's going to kill me. But <laughs> she's, got, like, she's like the good crazy, like the kind of crazy and then... And basically anyone else who goes through the same 9 to 5 BS that nobody likes. Indeed. So I feel bad for those kind of people. Now this one holds a special heart in, in, in Kichi's land here. Who's the most fabulous brony that you know? Let's see, fabulous. Think A&Y. But you don't have to say A&Y. That was just my whole idea. The most metrosexual man or woman that you know in the <laughs> fandom. <laughs> I don't even have like an answer for that. I can't even think of one. There's so many. <laughs> okay, you okay. Golden Fox? If you, okay, if you could imagine... Imagine someone coming out to like this big boisterous song wearing a gaudy jacket and just strutting down the runway. Who would who would you think would do that? Yeah, I guess I'll just say A and Y. I mean, that's obviously something I would do. Fucking Lord of the Queers over here. Indeed. We get it, you're gay. <laughs> Fight me. Uh, indeed. I what? wear my crown of gayness proudly. It's fine. It's okay. Well, there was at one time when I was on a drinking tour with a bunch of friends, uh, ended up in uh, the escape gay club and sang the Queen on karaoke. karaoke. <laughs> so in other words, a Friday night for Fagatini, gotcha. It's, so basically, yeah, Tricky is to be like, I want to be considered fabulous. <laughs> I am fabulous. Indeed. Consider <laughs> fabulous, senpai. What's the most expensive brony-related purchase you've ever made? Brony-related purchase. There are two things I could say for that. I have a really <clears throat> poorly made plushie, unfortunately. It's very poorly made. That I got ran at about $70. Now, I got this from like an outside company that you basically just pay for the materials. They didn't do a very good job. There's a really good person on DA for a minimal price. If you ever heard of Chopsticks Girl, I'd recommend
recommend her. I could probably talk to the DA after the show. All right, I'll, I'll check him out. And then there was this other thing. I think I remember commissioning someone for this really big piece of art and checking through my DA favorites to see if it's still here. But it was this one piece that was like... Super expensive in comparison to what I bought back in the day, and it's not in here right now, but it was this painting-esque picture, if that makes sense. Like, it looked really pretty, and I can't remember much because it was back in 2014, so. What's the farthest you've ever traveled for a brony convention? I haven't actually gone to any brony conventions in particular. BronyCon in Baltimore is actually fairly close to me in comparison, like, it's a matter of hours, like, a drive, so I could probably drive there. I've been wanting to go since last year, like, not this past one, but the year before. Give me a little bit of advice about that. Despite being close, you will probably want to find a hotel or something to crash at because mm-hmm. if you go too early in the day you're gonna be like okay i'm gonna drive home and you won't come back for the rest of the day and you miss out on a lot doing that i'd still get a hotel and everything like it's still like five hours or something well, like that. i recommend oh, yeah. trying I, I recommend trying to go for this one because there's a lot of people that's supposed to be showing up yeah. this year this may be the last great hurrah for a lot of people yeah <laughs> yeah I'm trying to get myself on board for this one. All right. Here's, this is a generic one for all you non-pony people. If you had to have a pony OC, what tribe would it be? I actually had a pony OC before I had the deer OC, and she was a Pegasus, but she was a Clydesdale Pegasus. So she was kind of mixed between an Earth and a Pegasus, if that makes sense. Because, like, the ironic thing about this is that I actually used to work with <clears throat> horses back in the day, and I had this one big Clydesdale who he was kind of getting up there, but he was really big and really heavy to work with, so it's kind of like, they're a lot of work, so it's like, I like that kind of breed of horse, when, if that makes sense. When you so really you base your pe- uh, Pegasus on your uh, real-life horse breed, that's cool. Um, so, just, just to quote this, they're really big and a lot of work. Not yeah. like that. <laughs> I was about to say, when you said really big and heavy, I was picturing British Ninja's picture from his moment with Dr. Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty Ninja has gotten liposuction since then. Yeah, I know. Of the people who stepped away from the community, is there any that you miss? Ooh, uh, that's a little bit of a tough one. I did, I did used to watch like one of the first videos that I saw when I started coming into the online part of the fandom was uh, Tommy Oliver's review on a Camelot wedding, which was a pretty popular video, I believe. Mm-hmm. And I kind of liked his videos a little bit. Like they weren't exactly like the best, but they were kind of like training wheels, sort of. For for me to see what was going on. What's the silliest thing that you've seen online, Brony related? I thought that was a softball question. Did I goof up there? Hello? Did, does anyone hear me? Damn it all. Like memes. Yes. yes. Oh, did, did you actually give an answer? I didn't hear anything. I just said memes. Oh, okay. That's perfectly The memes right. are crazy. I got that weird swirling thing, the, the blue thing on Skype, and I was like, uh-oh, please tell me this didn't go out. We're almost <laughs> done. <laughs> if you could take one thing out of the fandom, what would it be? Mm, the thing that I would take out of the fandom, it's not like fandom specific. Specific, but one of the things that I really like hate about online in general is when people play the disability card. Like that's mm. something that really irks me. Anyone like, specific that you're thinking about? Not really. I'm sure a certain how not to brony might have a good example though. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to bail you out, Spirit Productions. <laughs> Which I'm not going to respond. What's your favorite drink? <laughs> Well, I only drink water, so I guess water. Okay. Is there, like, other than people that you're definitely going to meet, like, at, if you decide to go to BronyCon, are there any bronies that you probably won't get the chance to meet, but you want to meet? Um, I kind of want to meet, in a way, like, Mad Munchkin, like... Well, if you sense- go to BronyCon, she'll be there. Yep. Okay, then never mind on that, I guess. <laughs> Disappointed that I didn't hear my name. <laughs> I was about to say you. <clears throat> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, probably mostly people that are like out of like out of the country. The foreigners. Oh, the foreigners that are not from America and yet somehow still manage to contact. Them. Oh my god! I just realized something. We got to get like freaking tricky one of those skull caps like with the ears <laughs> for uh, like he's a pretty con. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> those would be great. So we could tell it's tricky. <laughs> <laughs> when you're about to take a or when you're about to have a mental break from your workload how, how do you hold it together like uh what, what do you find inspiration 
motivation for it. You're like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. Are you talking <laughs> like in just general work or YouTube or art? Eh, what, 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 whatever is the, the most difficult for you. This is like, you know, someone's asking Spirit Productions right now. How do you cope with a mass amount of stress, whether that's work, class or whatever? Well, I'm going to say that there's a lot more stress on my art related stuff since like there's money in the mix with this one. With YouTube, I kind of get a little bit like a little bit crazy, like a little OCD with my videos. And I'm kind of weird in the sense that usually when I'm having trouble making something, I'll go play a video game on the Xbox or something like that. Try to like rest my brain, if that makes sense. Would you say that's your favorite time waster? It's probably not my favorite time waster. My favorite time waster is actually work, like working on art and stuff like that. Well, that's a good thing to have. What kind it's a good of- thing to have, yes. What, what kind of gamer are you? Like PC or console? Well, that's very basic, but I, I meant genre. I tend to prefer more along the shooter area. Like, I like a lot of different stuff, but I prefer stuff like Halo, the Fallout series, Gears of War, stuff like that. What's the most expensive thing you've ever had lost or stolen? Ooh, that, that's a tough one, because there's a lot of stuff that I've lost and just somehow managed to get them back. Somehow. Uh, I'm just imagining... She's a Hufflepuff. I was about to say, I was picturing when she's like lost or stolen, I've managed to get them back. There's someone in a bloody heap somewhere. <laughs> somehow. Lisa, somehow I got them back. <laughs> Such violence. I think probably I had this one thing that I bought from... I'm just going to point out, I've actually been to other conventions. They're just not brony conventions. But I got something at a convention that I went to in Texas. And when we were driving back from the airport, I realized that thing that I got, I think it was an art print, was not with me. And so after that, I went into basically a mental breakdown trying to figure out where the $40 or however expensive it was piece went. And then I realized I left it at the hotel and we had to call it and get it back. Had something similar once. With and right now it's probably buried in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, is there anything stupid you ever bought and you basically uh, regret it immediately afterwards that you bought it in the first place? Mm, I'm not going to say it was stupid, but I'm kind of disappointed in myself when I bought the console version of Overwatch. Oh, what's wrong with that? Long story short, um, I kind of wanted game to have like a storyline, like a campaign mode. So when I eventually got it, what am I looking at? What's going on? Why is why is there not the thing that I was expecting? Like it was me just kind of living in ignorance at the time because I try to avoid information on certain video games that comes out. If that makes sense, like, you don't want to spoil yourself on a potential story. And so basically, I got it, and there's nothing wrong with Overwatch. I actually enjoy the game quite a bit. It's just a lot You're of on- like. A Potential, it's a storyline and a potential that was lost, basically. You're not that much into online uh, only multiplayer games. Oh, it's not that. I play Splatoon all the time. Ah, yeah. okay. I'm assuming she wanted a Halo story mode, basically. Well, kind of like that. I wanted, when I saw. Like the Widowmaker and Tracer commercial. It's like, wow, okay. that's actually a really good story idea. To to be fair, it does not help that they actually set up a story for Overwatch in the trailers. <laughs> yeah, like, I was really expecting, like, some just fucking, like, groundbreaking just story mode, and I was really hoping because I wanted to really get that game. And then I found out it was just TF2 2.0, and I was just like, no thanks. <laughs> well, and not to mention that we are talking about Blizzard, and Blizzard games are usually somewhat lore heavy. <laughs> disappointed. Field I know a lot of people like that game, but I'm not into it. What's your field of study? Um, I've got a few different things going on right now. I've been doing basically an internship with computer repair and computer programming. And I'm also, basically I've kind of considered myself a Jill of all trades lately because I'm also pursuing this thing where I'll be teaching, uh, like for lack of a better word, I'll be holding a panel talking to other girls about entrepreneur- entrepreneurial pursuits. Like trying to help with, yeah, right. I can't speak. I, I have two left here and I could roll them into one. What's your happiest day in Brony been and what's been the worst day? Mm, let's see here. Happiest day in Brony probably being included into the Rift group because it's like so many opportunities, so many awesome people. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then probably the worst day, it was probably that moment when I realized that it was like no going back almost, if that makes sense. Like once you dive into certain kinds of things, you realize you can't really step out of it anymore. Like, I'm not saying that being part of the fandom is a bad thing or anything. I've been loving it for the past three years, but I kind of had, like, this moment where, like, my perspective was changing on things a little bit. Where did the time go, basically? Yeah. Yeah, it does that. Well, does anybody else have any other questions? Mm. Boxes or briefs? I don't know. Coke (laughs) or Pepsi? 
<laughs> I actually do have a question. Go ahead. Like, where did you learn, like, how to draw and how to be artistic? Like, did you have any, like, f- like classes, like, outside of schooling? She's For- gonna say she learned how to draw on her own. That's what they all say. <laughs> For lack of a better term, I've kind of been drawing just for a really long time. More, like, in the sense of training, I haven't really gotten anything outside of maybe, like, one or two art classes that I've taken. And those are mostly, like, basic, like, medium practice, like, pen- pencil practice and stuff like that. And for stuff like Photoshop and Illustrator and all the digital stuff I did, I kind of just had to figure it out on my own, so. Okay, so. then, uh, different, uh, let me ask, different, was there anything specific that uh, inspired you to start drawing? Ooh, that's a, that's a bit of a hard one for me. I think, like, it just felt kind of right to do it, and back on the topic earlier of the whole disability card, as someone who actually has high-functioning autism, I found that art is, like, very therapeutic, in a sense, and I'd kind of encourage it. Like, it's a way to help get thought processes and express yourself. So it's kind of one of the things that pushed me, and I, I just wanted to draw. It's a whole lot of fun. That's cool. Except when it's not. <laughs> no, no. Like, oh, God, those massive periods of art block. I get those oh, God, about those... once a month. Uh, it's, like a, it's like a period. It just comes and goes. Thank you, Fagatini. That's a wonderful thing to end the podcast on. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't spoken much during the podcast. I didn't want to be in, like a bitch and interrupt. <laughs> you want to speak more? <laughs> if you have, she wants, yeah, if she you wants have another to talk, one, go ahead. She wants to talk about her massive periods. <laughs> <laughs> I'm imagining period. Donut throwing a shit fit right now. This is what happens when you have too many women on the podcast. <laughs> Start talking about periods and stuff. Excuse me, did you just assume my gender, Donut? I have an F-43 fighter helicopter. <laughs> Indeed. Go ahead. Marvel or DC? I'm sorry, sorry. I... She said Marvel or Black. DC. Both and neither at the same time. How's that for an answer? Nice. <laughs> okay. Then, okay. Then, okay. Who is your Deadpool favorite is obviously super? The best. Kichi wants you to tell her in detail while freaking Harley Quinn is better than Black Cat. I wasn't thinking about who's Black Cat. Black Cat is uh, Harley Quinn is the best. Supporting uh, is she, the Spider Man ca- uh, character. She, she's the at least I remember her Cat from the Spider Man cartoon. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. She's very fan servicey. Guess- I guess, um, I've, well, I watched a lot more Batman. I watched Batman and a little bit of Spider-Man. Like, I watched a few variations of Spider-Man when I was a kid. I guess I kind of grew up with both, and I never really could pick one in particular, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well? Okay, but Deadpool. What? Okay, but Deadpool. I'm not sure, like, what the fuck he's from, but he is the best. He is Marvel. That, that's a statement, not a question, Tragatini. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're talking about Marvel and DC, so I thought I'd brought up, bring up, De- brought well, up Deadpool. You know what, one day, Fagatini, and I've all heard it to you before, we'll do a podcast for you. <laughs> I am down. Oh, I know this one. What is um Marvel movie? We're playing Jeopardy now, aren't we? Ah, no, yes. no you, did, you did really good. Now, okay, just saying, does, does anyone have any more questions for the guest? If not, this would be a really simple wrap-up for me. Mm-hmm. Bitchin. Quick, think of more questions to make it harder for Anthony. You're a jerk, um, 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 What? <laughs> Do you animate? No, no, no. Spirit Productions, do you know anyone with a flatter ass than Kichi in the room? <laughs> <laughs> you want to screw with me? <laughs> do you know anyone with a smaller brain than Anthony? Oh, of course you do. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Like at this point, my brain has gotten destroyed. Indeed. Do you regret agreeing to this podcast? <laughs> Do you know anybody who has a better relationship than Kichi and FNGR right, right now? I know I'm about 20 people. Stop the recording. God bless everyone. <laughs>